Hello dear students, wherever you are. Hope you are all doing well. I'm Mr. Idris, physics teacher. I'm continuing to explain all topics of physics for grade 12 students. I trust that my lesson will be useful for you. If you remember in a previous lesson, we stop it here in the sound uh, decibel level or relative intensity. Relative intensity is the ratio of the intensity uh, of a given sound to the intensity of the threshold of hearing so the relative intensity is it is relation with the ratio of the intensity is logarithmic not directly okay so when the intensity increases this the relative intensity or the decibel level also increases but not directly it is relation is logarithmic okay and also we studied the uh, factors that cause to change uh, uh, the factors that changes by changing the loudness and the pitch by changing the loudness uh, each of the sound intensity decibel level and amplitude changes but by changing pitch wavelength and frequency changes and uh, also we studied this range uh, the range of the intensity between uh, 10, 10 power negative 12 watt per meter square to one watt per meter squared. This is the range of sound intensity. In this range, we can hear the sound. And also the, uh, the range of decibel level is between what? Between zero and 120 uh, decibel. And if you remember, the, free, uh, the range of the frequency is between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. According math basic, guys, uh, we have some uh, sorry uh, we have some math basic for the logarithm because we need it to calculating the sound intensity and the decibel level logarithm 10 is equal to 1 guys according math basic logarithm 10 equal to what equal to 1 and logarithm 1 equal to 0 logarithm a times b if you have two term times multiplication between these two term it's gonna be what logarithm a plus logarithm b so what about logarithm a minus logarithm b logarithm a minus logarithm b is gonna be logarithm a over b in the case of subtraction between two terms for the logarithm it's gonna be division but multiplication is gonna be adding the two terms if the relative guys we have this question if the relative intensity equal to zero when decibel level is equal to zero when decibel level is equal to zero so it means that there is no sound here no it doesn't mean if relative intensity is equal to zero it doesn't mean there is no sound we have sound but this sound cannot be hearing so this is the softest sound why because when decibel level equal to zero the intensity of a given sound must be two less about uh, one times 10 power negative 12 watt per meter square okay so this is the softest sound we we cannot say this intensity has no sound but this sound cannot be hearing okay so the answer is no it does not mean that the intensity is zero because the intensity is equal to 10 power negative 12 we have intensity so that is why we have sound but maybe this sound uh, uh, cannot be hearing okay what is the magnitude of relative intensity guys what is relative intensity this beta is relative intensity what is this this is beta relative intensity or decibel level what is the magnitude of relative intensity at threshold of hearing at where a threshold of hearing guys if you remember in a previous lesson we studied the value of the intensity of threshold of hearing and intensity at threshold of pain intensity at threshold of hearing is equal to 10 uh, 1 times 10 power negative 12 and intensity at threshold of pain is equal to 1 times 10 uh, 1 uh, 1 watt per meter square as you can see here this is threshold of hearing. What is the value of intensity at threshold of hearing? 10 power negative 12. What is the value of intensity at threshold of pain? 1. Okay? So you have to keep in your mind. You have to memorize. Okay? In the question, if they bring this question, they will not give you the value of intensity at threshold of hearing and the value of intensity at threshold of pain. 
Guys, what is the decibel level at threshold of or at threshold of hearing? At what? Threshold of hearing. So you have to know a threshold of hearing I is equal to what? I is equal to 10 power negative 12 of watt per meter square. How did you know? Because this question mentioned threshold of uh, hearing. Uh, according to the equation of relative intensity, relative intensity is equal to what? 10 logarithm I intensity of given sound to the intensity at threshold of hearing. B is equal to 10 logarithm I and threshold of hearing is equal to 10 power negative 12. I note is already constant, guys. I note it means that threshold of hearing always equal to 10 power negative 12 of watt per meter squared. I note is constant, it means that threshold of hearing. Divided 10 power negative 12. 10 power negative 12 divided by 10 power negative 12 is going to be 1. Guys, 10 logarithm 1. According math basic, logarithm 1 is equal to what? 0. What is remain here? 10. 10 times 0? Zero? 0 decibel. This is very important, guys. Listen carefully. At threshold of hearing, at threshold of hearing, what is the value of decibel level? Zero. Can we say at zero decibel, there is no sound? No, we cannot say this. But, uh, but we can say this sound is very soft. Why? Because it is intensity is too less. It's about 10 power negative 12 of watt per meter, uh, uh, watt per meter squared. Okay? A threshold of hearing, as you can see here, I solve it here. Guys, another question. What is the magnitude of relative intensity at threshold of pain? What is the value of given intensity? Threshold of pain. At threshold of pain. At threshold of pain, intensity is equal to what? One. One what? One watt per meter squared. What is unknown? Decibel level. How can you determine decibel level or relative intensity is equal to 10 logarithm? I over I naught. Decibel level is equal to 10. Logarithm. I. Do we have I? Yes. At threshold of pain. At where? At threshold of pain. At threshold of pain, intensity is equal to what? Is equal to 1. 1 divided by 10 power negative 12. Why? Because I not always equal to 10 power negative 12. Uh, according to math basic guys, 10 logarithm, this 10 power, 1 divided 10 power negative 12, this 10 power negative 12, it goes to the denominator, it's gonna be what? 10 power positive 12. Positive 12. So, according to math basic again, you have to multiply the power by this 10 in the front of the logarithm. Guys, 12 times 10 is equal to 120. What is remain? We multiply power. The power cannot maintain over the power anymore, over this 10 anymore. It's going to be 10 power 1, 10. Okay? What is the value of logarithm 10? Logarithm 10 is equal to 1. Relative intensity, bring down this 120. Logarithm 10 is equal to what, guys? 1 times 1. 120 times 1, 120 decibel. Okay? So, can we say decibel level is equal to 120 decibel at threshold of pain? Yes. What is the value of decibel level or relative intensity or beta at threshold of pain? You have to say 120 decibel. Okay? So we prove it this 120 decibel. Guys, uh, is it possible if the decibel level is given and find the intensity of a given sound? Yes, of course. Why not? Okay, now I'm going to give you some example that the decibel level is given, but we have to find the intensity of a given sound. As you can see in this uh, question, if the intensity of sound, guys, what is this? 
This is the, uh, sorry, sorry, I do apologize. This is still about finding decibel level, okay? After that, we, ha uh, we have example to find the intensity. This question also we have to find relative intensity. But in this question, uh, we don't have threshold of pain and we don't have threshold of hearing. The intensity must be given, okay? The intensity of sound is 10 power negative 3 watt per meter squared. What is this? This is intensity of a given sound, I. I is equal to what? 10 power negative 3 watt per meter squared. What is, it is relative intensity, guys. Beta is equal to what? It is too easy. At first, you have to write down the equation of decibel level, which is equal to 10 logarithm. I, intensity of given sound, to the intensity at threshold of hearing. This is equation, constant. Bring down this beta, 10 logarithm. Do we have I? Yes. If the question does not say threshold of, threshold at, uh, threshold of hearing or threshold of pain, the intensity must be given in value. I know the equal to what, guys? 10 power negative 12. 10 logarithm. Negative 3 minus negative 12, it's going to be a positive 9, according to math basic, okay? Multiply this 9 by 10, always, okay? Because we need 10 without power. 9 times 10, 90. Logarithm what? Logarithm 10. Logarithm 10 is equal to what? 1. Logarithm 10 equal to 1. 90 times 1? 90 decibel okay so when intensity of a given sound is equal to 10 power negative 3 it is decibel level equal to 90 decibel yes okay uh, the same question guys if the decibel level is given b is equal to 90 decibel what is the intensity of a given sound? What is unknown? Intensity. Can we find intensity by knowing the decibel level? Yes, of course. So, as I uh, explain it for you, when intensity is given, can we find the decibel level? Yes, of course. And vice versa is true. When the decibel level is given, we can also find the intensity of the sound. At first, you have to write down the equation of decibel level, 10 logarithm I over I naught. Do we have decibel level? Yes, 90. Bring down this 90. 10 logarithm. Do we have I? No. I is unknown. Do we have I naught? Yes, 10 power negative 12. Okay? So, you can divide both sides by 10. 19 by 10, this term by 10. This term with this term cancel. 90 over 10 is equal to 9. 10 with 10 cancel. What is remain? Logarithm. Logarithm what? I over 10 power negative 12. Guys, we have to remove this logarithm. Okay, how can we remove this logarithm? Multiplied by anti-logarithm. Anti-log. Anti-log with this log cancel. But anti-log for number, it's going to be power. This 9, it's going to be 9 power. Why? Because anti-logarithm for number, it's going to be power. Like, for example, anti-logarithm for 5 is equal to 10 power 5. Anti-logarithm for 3, 10 power 3. Anti-logarithm for 9. 10 power 9. Anti-logarithm with logarithm cancel. What is remain, guys? I, the unknown, divided by 10 power negative 12. Cross product, 10 power 9 times 10 power negative 12. You will get 10 power negative 3 watt per meter square. In both way, guys, look at this question, a previous question. In a previous question, intensity of the given sound was given 10 power negative 3. When intensity is equal to 10 power negative 3, decibel level equal to what? 90 decibel. So what about 
if the decibel level is equal to 90 decibel, intensity must be equal to what? 10 power negative 3. In this way, you can find intensity and decibel level according to the equation of decibel level. Okay, this is the same equation. Decibel level is given, you can find intensity. And also we have the fast way, okay? Uh, but in the long way, oh, it's also it's easy. You don't need to think about the fast way, okay? Don't depend on the fast way. Uh, I always solve in the questions uh, in the long way, not in the fast way, okay? Because the fast way is not scientific. Guys, look at this question. Very good question. When a decibel level of a stadium, decibel level, if is that better, when decibel level of stadium increased, what happened to the decibel level? Increased. Intensity also must be increased, yes. From 30 to 60. B initial, initial uh, decibel level, 30 decibel. Final decibel level, 60 decibel. You, uh, so does the noise intensity change by which factor? The intensity changes by which factor? I2 is equal to how many times of I1? When B1, okay, you can say B1 and B2 instead final and initial. B1, 30, B2, 60 decibel, okay? What will be the intensity of the second uh, time, okay? Uh, in that case, you have to use this relation. Delta B is equal to what, guys? B final minus B initial, okay? And delta B is equal to B final, okay? 10 logarithm, uh, 10 logarithm I2 or B2 over minus B1. Sorry, you can say 1 and 2. B2 minus B1. I2 over I0 minus B1 10 logarithm. I1 over I0. If, if we have subtraction between two logarithm, so you can express like this 10 logarithm. It's going to be what? I2 over I1 because we have to divide this two terms according to math basic for logarithm. Logarithm A minus logarithm B is equal to log 10 logarithm A over B. It's going to be what? A over B. If you divide this term by this term, I note with I not cancel, what does remain? I2 over I1. Do we have delta B? Yes. Delta B is equal to what? 60 minus 30. Delta B is equal to 30 decibel. Do we have change in decibel level? Yes. Increased or decreased? Increased. Positive 30 decibel. Replace. And instead of delta B, write down 30. 10 logarithm, guys. I2 over I1 is unknown. Divide both sides by 10. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. This 10 cancel. 30 divided by 10, it's going to be 3. And logarithm I2 over I1 stay here, okay? How can you remove this log? Multiply by anti-logarithm. By what? Anti-log. Anti, sorry, anti-logarithm for 3. Anti-logarithm 3 is equal to what? As I told you, 10 power 3. Anti-logarithm for any number, it becomes power. Anti-logarithm with logarithm cancel. What does remain, guys? I2 over I1. What we have here? 1. Cross product. Guys, I2 is equal to 1 times I2, I2. 10 power 3 times I1. 10 power 3, I1. Or you can write down... 10 power 3, thousands, thousands of I1. Guys, when does I2 is equal to thousands of I1? If the change in decibel level increases from 30 to 60. If delta B is equal to 30. 
Okay. What about if delta B is 20, positive 20? If delta B is 20, this is the level I2 is equal to 100 of I1. If delta B in fast way, delta B is equal to 10, the difference in this level is equal to 10. How, what we have one here, I2 is going to be 10 of I1. Okay? Guys, this is in the case of increasing. So what about if the decibel level drop it or decreases like from 60 to 30? B1 is equal to 60 decibel. B2 is equal to 30 decibel. What happened to the relative intensity? Delta B is equal to what, guys? Is equal to B2 minus B1, 30 minus 60. Delta B is equal to what? Is equal to negative 30 decibel. Negative 30 decibel. In that case, I2 is equal to what? And instead of 1,000, 1 over 1,000 of I1. Sorry, of I1. Why here 1 over 1,000? But in a previous case, I2 is equal to 1,000 because the difference in decibel. If the difference in decibel level is positive 30, I2 is equal to thousands of I1. But if the decibel level is equal to negative 30, I2 is equal to 1 over thousands of I1. Guys, what about if relative intensity is equal to negative 20 decibel level? I2, what we have here, 2, is equal to 1 over 2, 0, okay? Because we have to hear 1 over 100 of I1 because it decreases. Okay, so this is very important. Pay attention, please. Another question, guys. If the sound intensity becomes 500 times it is original intensity, what do you mean by if sound intensity becomes 500 times greater than original intensity? It means that I2 is equal to 500 of I1. Or we can say I2 over I1 is equal to 500. What will be the change in decibel or decibel level? So how it is relative intensity changes in decibel? Delta B is equal to what, guys? Lo 10 logarithm I2 over I1. I2 over I1. Bring down this delta B. 10 logarithm I2 over I1. Do we have I2 over I1? Yes. 500. Okay. Delta B is equal to 10 logarithm 500. 10 logarithm 527 decibel level. 27 what? Decibel level. This is very important to find change in decibel level. We can find by which factor intensity changes and also we can find how relative intensity changes or how it is relative intensity changes or by which factor it is relative intensity changes okay uh, guys this is about relative intensity and the intensity of sound as you know this relation between intensity of sound and the decibel level is logarithmic we cannot say directly proportional the relative intensity is logarithmic uh, with the ratio of the intensity of given sound to the intensity at threshold of hearing Guys, look at question 16 in chapter review. This question is a little different with this uh, questions, okay? Uh, you have to listen carefully. Uh, it's very easy, okay? Just listen carefully, please. Question 16. Many students, they have uh, a problem or they are struggling with this question, the questions of machine, okay? But now I'm going to make easy. Uh, a noisy or uh, a noisy machine what do you mean by a noisy machine? How many machines do we have? One. A noisy machine, it means that we have one machine. Okay? In a factory, produces a decibel rating of 80 decibel. Okay? Um, number of given machine is equal to one machine. Okay? So, the decibel level B1 is equal to 80 decibel, 80 decibel, this is decibel level. A noisy machine, one machine, 
in a factory produces a decibel rating 80 decibel how many identical machines could you add what is unknown guys and add what do you mean by and add the number of machines that must be added in this question the number of machine or the number of added machine how many identical machine must be add and add what do you mean by and add number of added machine what about this n given machine one machine okay how many identical machines could you add to the factory without exceeding exceeding what 90 decibel b2 is equal to what guys b2 is equal to 90 decibel okay limit set by federal regulation so this is very important be careful okay guys and add you have to memorize this relation between the given uh, machine and the added machine okay and add is equal to n the number of all machines given and add the entire machines minus as you can see here number of what given guys do we have n no we have to find n to replace in this equation to find n add do we have n given yes we have n given but we don't have n what do you mean by n guys look uh, n add is the number of added machine but n number of machines number of all machines number of all machines okay guys how can you determine this end at first you have to find the intensity for the uh, at 80 decibel for the first machine okay and guys you have to memorize another relation between the intensity in this uh, in the second time and intensity for the first time i2 is equal to n i1 i2 is equal to what n i1 what is i1 intensity of sound for one machine what about i2 intensity of sound in the second case when we have many machines we don't know how many machines we have okay but i2 is equal to the number uh, is the intensity of all machines but i1 intensity for the uh, one machine okay uh, guys do we have i1 no but we can't find it why because we have b1 there is a relation between decibel level and intensity b1 is equal to 10 logarithm i1 over 10 power negative 12 uh, do we have b1 yes 80 10 logarithm do we have i1 no over 10 power negative 12 divide by 10 and multiply anti logarithm multiply what anti logarithm divide by 10 it's gonna be 8 anti logarithm it's gonna be 10 power 8 10 cancel anti logarithm cancel what is remain i1 over 10 power negative 12 cross product guys 10 power 8 times 10 power negative 12 10 power negative 4 watt per meter square what is this this is the intensity of sound for one machine for a noisy machine what is this intensity of sound for the single machine for one machine now we have to find n because we have this relation guys okay uh, now we have to use another relation uh, the second decibel level guys when we have one machine one machine the decibel level is equal is equal to b1 is equal to 80 decibel level okay so how many identical machine number of machine can be added for b2 to be 90 decibel how many machines must be added 
when the decibel level reaches or without exceeding the decibel level uh, 90 decibel b2 guys b2 is equal to what 10 logarithm i2 over 10 power negative 12. by knowing i2 and uh, by replacing i2 instead of i2 can you write down n i1 yes how look do we have b2 yes 90. 10 logarithm guys do we have i2 instead of i2 use this relation instead of i2 can you write n i1 yes n i1 over what 10 power negative 12. so do we have i1 guys do we have i1 yes we didn't have but we found it okay do we have i1 no but we found and instead of this i1 can you write down n times 10 power negative 4 yes we can do it okay both side divided by 10 guys 90 divided by 10 9 10 with 10 cancel what does remain log 10 power negative 4 divided by 10 power negative 12 it's gonna be n time is 10 power positive 8 okay guys multiply anti-logarithm anti-logarithm for 9 is equal to what 10 power 9 what does remain n times 10 power 8 can we find n the, the number of all machines yes n is equal to what 10 power 9 divided 10 power 8 is equal to 1 and is equal to what 1 sorry 10 machine 10 10 what 10 machines 10 power 9 divided by 10 power 8 is equal to 10 power 1 10 power 1 is equal to what 10 machines how many machines do we have 10 replace into this equation to find what n add guys n add do we have n we didn't have but we found 10. Do we have n given? Yes. n add is equal to what? Is equal to 9 machine. Guys, the final answer is not 10. Be careful. The final answer is 9 machines must be added for this factory without exceeding 90 decibel. So this is very important. Okay, if the question, if the question asks us to find the number of added machine, you have to use this relation. N add is equal to N minus N given. N is the number of all machines. So guys, be careful. If the question asks us to find the entire machines, the whole machines of the factory, this 10 is correct. So I hope you understood this question very well because it is very important, okay? Guys, in this question, how many machines do we have at first? The given machine, one. But here, we have two noisy machines, guys. How many given machines do we have? Two. Guys, in two noisy machines, like this is first machine, and this is second machine. The decibel level for both, B is equal to what? decibel level for both is equal to 80 decibel level guys this decibel level for machine number one or machine number two this is for both the two noisy machine in factory both of them produces so this is decibel level for both what is the difference between this question and the previous question actually i added this question we don't have the same question in the book but I added because they have the same idea, but a little different. Both machines, they have 80 decibel. How many identical machines could you add? What is unknown? N add is unknown. N add is equal to what? N minus N given. Without exceeding 90 decibel. If you look, we have the same value, guys. But what is the difference between this question and the previous question? In a previous question, we have one machine. One, a noisy machine. But here we have two machines, both produces 80 decibel, okay? Guys, 
uh, how can we determine the I1? Because we need I1, huh? I2 is equal to N I1. What do you mean by this I1? This I1 is the intensity for each machine, not for two machines. I1 is what? Intensity of sound for a single machine. Uh, what we have to do here, we have to find intensity for both. How can we find intensity for both machine? By using this relation. Decibel level for both is equal to 10 logarithm I both divided by threshold of hearing is equal to a t is equal to 10 logarithm i both divided by negative term divided 10 10 a t divided by 10 8 10 with 10 cancel 8 log i both over 10 power negative term anti logarithm guys multiplying anti logarithm what happens to this 8 it's gonna be 10 power 8 anti logarithm times logarithm cancel what is remain intensity for both sound both machine divide the threshold of hearing i both is equal to what multiply these two number which is equal to negative 10 power negative 4. guys what is this 10 power negative 4 intensity for which machine the first machine or second machine or both both be careful this 10 power negative 4 watt per meter squared is the intensity for both machines but here in a previous question this 10 power negative 4 for one machine because the the number of given machine in this question already was given one okay but here because we have two machines that is why this is the value for both guys if i intensity for two machines is equal to 10 power negative four what about the intensity for a single machine how many machines do we have to divide it by two you will get i1 i1 one machine i mean one machine here I both divided by 2, which is equal to what? 5 times 10 power negative 5 watt per meter squared. After that, this is I1, guys. Okay, I1 is equal to 5 times 10 power negative 5. After that, write down the equation for the sound relative intensity B2 is equal to 10 logarithm I2 over I0. And instead of I2, write down what? N I1. Why? Because I2 is equal to n i1 after finding number of machine you will get 20 machines how many machines 20 machines this is n the number of all machines how many machines was given in the question two machine n add is equal to what n add is equal to n minus n given do we have n we didn't have but we found 20 minus number of given machine how many machines two 20 minus 2 is equal to 18 machines must be added in the question. Okay? But guys, if the question says another way, another uh, question. Two noisy machines in factory, each of them. Here we have each of them. But here we have both of them. If you see both, you have to find the intensity for both. Intensity for both, then divided by 2. To get I1. But if the question says two noisy machine each of them, it means that this intensity is I1. Okay? Replace into this equation. Number of machine is gonna be 10. Number of added machine 10 minus 2, it's gonna be 8 machines. This is very important, guys. Be careful. The difference between here is what? Here the question says for both machines, but here each uh, both machine they have intensity uh, decibel level 80 but here each of them they have uh, 80 decibel okay this 80 decibel for the for each of them okay guys look at the review and assist question 20 a baseball coach shouts loudly at an umpire standing five meters away the distance from the source is five meter okay the distance is what five meter and if the sound power produced by the coach is 3.1 times 10 power negative 3 watt power 3.1 times 10 power negative 3 watt what is the decibel level of the sound when it reaches the umpire 
What is unknown? Intensity. Okay? So this is very important, guys. Sorry, what is the decibel level, not intensity? Sorry. What is the, in the decibel level? Guys, decibel level is equal to what? 10 logarithm intensity of given sound divided by threshold of hearing. Do we have I? No. But instead of I, we have R and power. I is equal to what? Power over 4 pi R squared. 3.1 times 10 power negative 3 divided by 4 times 3.14 times 5 squared. I is equal to what? I is equal to 10 power negative 5. What? Per meter squared. Replace into this equation. B is equal to what? 10 logarithm. Do we have I? We didn't. But we found 10 power negative 5. 10 power negative 12. B is equal to what? 10 logarithm. Sorry. 10 logarithm. 10 power negative 5 minus 10 power negative 12 is going to be 10 power 7. Okay? 7 times 10, 17. Logarithm 10. Logarithm 10, 1. B is equal to what? 70 decibel. B is equal to what? 70 decibel level. Okay? Uh, guys, we finished the sound intensity and the relative intensity in section 2, chapter 4. We have another topic in this chapter is about the forced vibrations and resonance. Okay? What is natural frequency at first? Any object will vibrate at a certain frequency. Any object that vibrate at a certain frequency, for example, any pendulum will vibrate with specific frequency when the bulb is moving away from the equilibrium position and any object has its own frequency, okay? So, the nat as known as a natural frequency, okay? Natural frequency of a pendulum depends on what? Natural frequency of a pendulum, if you remember in chapter 3, frequency is equal to what? 2 pi L over G. The frequency of pendulum changes by changing what? L. Can we say the natural frequency of a pendulum depends on the length and gravity? Yes. Depend on what? Length and free fall acceleration. What about sympathetic vibrations? The vibrating string of a guitar, for example, the string is of the guitar. The vibrating strings, when we are vibrating, when we are stuck, the string of the guitar, the vibrating string of guitar force what? Force the bridge of the guitar to vibrate. And the bridge in turn transfers this vibration to the guitar's body. These forced vibrations are called sympathetic vibrations. What is the sympathetic vibration? For example, when you are stuck the tuning fork, okay, and attach the tuning fork at the, bo at the, at the uh, board or the table, the vibration of the tuning fork transfer it into the table okay as a result the intensity of the sound increases and this vibration is called the sympathetic vibrations okay uh, as you can see in this uh, video now i'm going to show you what is the sympathetic vibrations look look at this child this is forced vibrations, guys. What is this? Hitting hammer, this tuning fork, this is forced. But when we put the tuning fork on the table, the table also will vibrate. The vibrating on the table is called the sympathetic vibration. What is the vibration of the table? It's a sympathetic vibration, results from the forced vibrations. Okay? But at first, what we had, at first we had a Forced vibration. What is this? Forced vibration. Okay. But the vibrating on the table is uh, sympathetic vibrations. Okay. Let's go back to our PDF. Okay. Uh,
Look, guys. What is forced vibration? A vibration of an object by effect of hammer, which is uh, so in this video, where effect of vibration of the object with the given frequency, which is different from it is natural frequency, such as vibration of a musical instrument by body by affected the string is vibration or by the trees vibrating trees when affected by wind. The string is vibration die out faster than. Uh, they would if they were not attached to the body of the guitar because uh, if the string is not fixed on the body of the guitar uh, this vibration is going to be uh, die out damping because it is not fixed on the body of the guitar there is no sympathetic vibrations okay and the sound intensity decreases because the guitar body has larger area when the vibrated area increases the sound intensity also increases the guitar body allows the energy exchange between what? Strings and air happens more eff efficiently. They are increasing the intensity of the sound produced. And guys, we have electrical guitar can produce sound that are much more intense than those of an unamplified uh, acoustic guitar which uses only the forced vibrations of the guitar's body to increase the intensity of the uh, sound from the vibration string. In an electrical guitar, guys, in an electrical guitar, string vibrations are translated into what? Electrical signals or impulses. In electrical guitar, string vibration converted to electrical uh, impulse or electrical signals. Guys, what is resonance? After we studied the natural frequency and sympathetic frequency uh, vibrations and forced vibrations, now we will study resonance. It is very, very important, guys. What is resonance? A phenomenon that occurs when the frequency, frequency of what, guys? Of a force applied to a system, a frequency of a force applied to a system, equals frequency of applied force like tuning force tuning force is equal to the natural frequency of the vibration in the system resulting in a large amplitude of vibration in a resonance what happens to the amplitude gets more when amplitude gets more what happened to the energy energy also gets more okay this phenomenon is called the Resonance. For example, when the forced vibration are stuck in this tuning fork, the tuning fork vibrate and produces sound. If these two tuning forks they have the same match frequency, the sound transferred from this tuning fork to this tuning fork and this tuning fork also will vibrate. Okay? As you can see in this video, now I'm going to show you some video about the resonance. Look. Guys, look at this video. This is forced vibration. The frequency of the forced vibration, okay, it goes to trans. But uh, look, guys, look. Uh, guys, look. Sorry. These two tuning forks they have the same frequency. If the forced vibration in the first tuning fork is transferred to the second tuning fork, it means that this tuning fork they have the same frequency. Can we say this two tuning fork are at resonance? Yes, we can say this two, this two tuning fork at resonance, and we have a resonance here because they have the same frequency. But here we don't have what? Look, guys, uh, we have two cases. For well, this case, these two frequencies are not matched to each other. Okay, these two frequencies cannot match. This is longer than this one. This tuning fork is longer than this tuning fork. If the forced vibration of the first tuning fork is forced, okay, the, vibe, the sound cannot transfer from this tuning fork to, to this tuning fork. Why? Because they don't have same frequency. If two systems are in different frequency, Resonance does not occur, okay? But if, look, now, identical. Now we have identical uh, tuning fork. They have the same frequency. 
Does the sound intense, the sound transfers from this tuning fork to this tuning fork? Yes. Can we say this tuning fork, they have resonance? Yes. Look, they will vibrate also. Okay. Guys, look. This tuning fork also, they have the same frequency. The faucet vibration in the first tuning fork, they can transfer this sound from this tuning fork to this tuning fork. Why? Because these two tuning forks are uh, matches in frequency or they have the same frequency. So this is the frequency of the wind. It goes to collapsing the bridge also in Ottawa, in America. Look at this video. There is some ants. It's too funny. Yeah. So the ants they are looking for this food, but when they are climbing on the tree, see what will happen. The frequency of the food is matches. The frequency of the food of the ants they matches the trees. This is resonance, guys. Produces more amplitude, more energy. Yeah. So the dog got buried. Now it's time to punish. Punish the cat. Okay. So they took all foods. So this is physics, guys. Guys, look. How many tuning forks do we have? Two. The first one, 512 hertz. The second one, 440 hertz. Can we say these two tuning forks are matched to each other? They are equal? No. Can we say the resonance will occur in this case? No. The resonance, the, the resonance cannot be observed here. Okay? This, the sound cannot transfer from this tuning fork to this tuning fork because Resonance does not occur in different frequency. Only it should be match. No transferring sound. But if if you bring another tuning fork with the same frequency, look what happened to the ball. Vibrate. So what does it mean? It means that the sound transferred from the first tuning fork to the second tuning fork. Hope you get benefited from this video, so it is very helpful to understanding, okay? So for each lesson, I will try to uh, show you some uh, good videos uh, to understanding uh, the topics, okay? Guys, uh, look at this question. Under what conditions does resonance IQ question 15 in chapter review when the force of vibration, the frequency of applied force is the same as the natural frequency of vibration system or vibrating system. In that case, the resonance will occur. In the system where two or more objects have the same frequency, resonance will occur. Resonance is a special case of force of vibration. Not every force of vibration has resonance. But every resonance has a, a force of vibration. But vice versa is not true. In a resonance, the amplitude, this is very important, guys. Listen carefully, please. In resonance, the amplitude of the vibrations increased. So this may be caused the collapse of the bridge, trees, okay? And high buildings such as on November 1914, the Takama Narrows suspension bridge collapsed in Oakland, California in 1989 when part of the upper deck of the fairway collapsed. This is because of the resonance. Okay? Uh, explain resonance with uh, an experiment. Guys, as you can see here, how many balls do we have? Four. One, two, three, and four. Which two balls have resonance? On the resonance will I care between with balls and which balls okay as you can see here uh, l1 is equal to l2 
L1 and L2, same. Okay, they have the same L. Gravity is the same. Can we say both blue balls, ball number one and ball number three, they have the same frequency? Yes. Why? Because frequency is equal to what? One over two pi? G over L. What does frequency of a pendulum depend on? L. <clears throat> Which two balls, they have the same L? Ball number one, ball number three. Can we say these two balls, they have the same frequency? Yes. So the resonance will occur between which ball? Ball number one and ball number three. Can we say the resonance occurs between ball one and ball two? No, because different frequency. F1, guys, look. Sorry, L1 and L3. F1 matches F3. Resonance, occur. But F1 does not equal to F2. F1 does not equal to F4. Resonance does not occur. Okay? Only between F1 and F3. Ball number one and ball number three. Because they have the same length and they have the same frequency. Which of the following increases when the two objects are at resonance? Velocity increases? No. Frequency doesn't change. Wavelength does not change. Only amplitude gets small. Okay. Why are pushes given to play ground swing more effectively if they are given at a certain or regular intervals than if they are given at a random positions in the swing cycle? So this is very important. For example, if I bring a pendulum, okay. Guys, look. Look at this pendulum. If the pushes of the ball is matches or repeated at the same time, one, what happened to the frequency increases, okay? It, it's gonna be match. The frequency of my hand with the ball, it becomes match. But what about if I push here, okay? Aerial, what happens to the frequency of the ball, it becomes decreases. So that is why when we are pushing the swing, okay, so the, the pushing will be matched with the returning, okay? Uh, for example, when you release a swing and when you are going in the front and moving toward the equilibrium, so it's gonna be collapsed and this swinging becomes slowly, okay? Because the uh, systems cannot be at resonance. So, because the swing is amplitude is maximized when the pulse matches the swing is natural frequency. But if you change your position, these two frequencies cannot be matches and the uh, resonance will not occur. Although soldiers are usually required to march together in step, they must break their march, there must be break what? Their march when crossing bridge, like as you have seen in the video of the uh, ants, okay? You have to break this march when they are crossing the bridge, explain the possible danger for crossing rectly bridge without taking their frequency, uh, because vibration could set the bridge in motion if they match one of the bridge's natural frequency and it goes to collapsing the bridge. If they have the same match, the same march, okay? If they are safe with the same march, in that case, maybe the frequency of the march is equal to the frequency, the natural frequency of the bridge, and it goes to collapsing because of the resonance. Okay, so that's why they have to break this marching, okay? Guys, we finish it, section two in chapter four. Inshallah, next lesson, we will study uh, section three. Uh, the last section in chapter 4. Question 1, section review, when the stable level of traffic straight increases from 40 to 60. Guys, look at this question. I'm going to solve in a fast way, okay? Delta B is equal to what? Final minus initial, 60 minus 40, 20. If delta B is 20, I2 is equal to what? What is here? 2 is equal to 100 of I1. I2 is equal to 100 I1. It's too easy. And also you can solve in a long way.
Uh, a tuning fork consists of two metal prongs that vibrate at a single frequency when struck lightly. What will happen if the vibrating tuning fork is placed near another tuning fork of the same frequency? Resonance will occur. The second tuning fork will pick up the vibration of the first tuning fork and the faint sound will be heard from the second fork. This occurs because the two forks have same what guys? Natural frequency. Which is a condition of what? Resonance. And we solve with this question if you remember. When the sound gets louder, intensity, decibel level, amplitude changes. But when the sound is pitch, it gets higher, frequency and wavelength changes. Okay? Uh, uh, we finish it, this section. Thank you for listening, inshallah. Uh, in the next lesson, we continue to explaining chapter 4, and uh, inshallah, we will finish section 3 in chapter 4.